The Kalahari Desert in Botswana, Namibia, and South Africa is a desolate place. For over a thousand kilometers, red sands and sparse bushes support only a minimum of life, and the driest places receive just 110 millimeters of rain per year. After crossing the Orange River in South Africa, you can drive for days without encountering the next natural water source, which makes the appearance of the Okavango Delta in northern Botswana even more surprising. Chapter 1 the geography of the Okavango Delta. Crossing through the Caprivi Strip, which I have covered in depth in a previous video which will be linked in the description, the Okavango River makes its way southward, forcing its way through the ever more arid landscape of the Kalahari Desert. After passing the Tsudilo Hills, the land suddenly flattens out, leading to the Okavango River gradually spreading wider and wider across the savanna. Once the river passes the city of Seronga in Botswana, the flattening becomes so extreme that the normal river flow effectively stops, and slow-moving wetlands are created around the now invisible banks. After 250 kilometers downstream, almost all water has dispersed either through evaporation or transpiration of plants, yet the surface level has only dropped 60 meters, while spreading to a width of 150 kilometers. While the Kalahari Desert is naturally quite flat already, Millions of years of sedimentation have created a low topographic gradient of just 1 to 3470 across the delta. The gradient of the surface is so low that newly arriving water can take up to 4 months until it reaches the southern boundary. The low velocity flow has created a dense permanent marshland in the center of the delta, with many water holes, canals and lagoons scattered around it. Termite moles are responsible for many of the islands in the delta, and while the swampy landscape houses over a thousand species of trees, shrubs and grasses, the Okavango Delta itself doesn't actually lay in a climate suitable for this diversity. Despite the plentiful water, the delta is located in an arid region without much precipitation, and the life within is entirely dependent on a highland over a thousand kilometers away. Chapter 2 Seasonal Variation in the Okavango the Angolan Highlands are considered the water tower of southern Africa, with extensive peatland and lakes collecting, storing and releasing most of the water for its surrounding countries. Next to the Kunene and Zambezi River, the Okavango River is one of the major rivers starting from this highland, and its volumetric flow downstream is entirely dependent on the water given in its source region. Heavy seasonal variety and precipitation across the highland allows categorization of four distinct phases, starting in December with a dry period. During this time, the rainy season in Angola has just started, but none of the water has made the treacherous journey into the Kalahari Desert yet, leaving the delta at its smallest size of the year, with just 4,000 square kilometers of flooded area. Until February, the hot period persists, with the humid air reaching up to 40 degrees Celsius. Two months after the heavy rainfalls in the Angolan highlands, the flooding finally reaches the delta, starting the milder period from March until June, where the temperatures lower and the delta slowly fills up. During the winter period, from June till August, the temperatures are the coolest, and up to six months after the rainy season in Angola, the delta has reached its largest expansion of the year, covering up to 12,000 square kilometers with flooded plains. With September approaching, the temperatures quickly rise again, and the combination of reduced inflow from the Okavango River and the high evaporation shrinks the flooded area again and it all starts over in the following summer. The seasonal flooding and receding floodwaters have created a unique ecosystem full of canals, lagoons, islands, forests, shrubland savanna, and oxbow lakes in the middle of the dry Kalahari Desert. We humans are not the only ones aware of these seasonal patterns though, because entire populations of large African mammals migrate vast distances through subtropic Africa just to arrive at the delta during its expansion, enjoying the lush greenery and crystal clear water of the Okavango River. Chapter 3 Wildlife around the Okavango Delta The abundant water in the delta has given rise to a large permanent population of large mammals like Nile crocodiles, African elephants, African buffaloes and hippos, which get seasonal visitors of large migrating populations of wild beasts, zebras and impalas, which roam the surrounding savanna for the rest of the year. These large populations of herbivores, of course, also attract various predators like lions, hyenas, cheetahs, and African wild dogs, which are welcoming the feast. In fact, the Okavango Delta is one of the few places in Africa where every one of the big five game can be found, housing lions, leopards, 
buffaloes, African elephants and black and white rhinoceroses. The whole Okavango Delta is protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but this doesn't protect the delta from all human influence. A large struggle is the impact of global climate change, which changes the flow patterns of the Okavango River, leading to less and warmer water arriving in the delta, which spurs algae growth, starving out many of the native fish species. Increased water needs in the upstream regions of Angola also apply stress to the river flow, and recent discoveries of oil deposits by Canadian oil exploration company Reckon Africa may cause further disruptions to the pristine wildlife and ecosystems if these get exploited. Finally, poachers have scavenged the African wildlife for a long time, and while anti-poaching laws are strictly enforced, the vast areas are hard to control. The problem has gotten so bad that in 2021, the government of Botswana evacuated all rhinos out of the delta to an undisclosed sanctuary since approximately 138 specimens have been killed in the five years prior, decimating 25% of Botswana's rhino population. All in all, while the Okavango Delta is unique in its way that such a vast delta dissipates in the middle of an arid desert, this extraordinary place is the microcosm of the broader challenges faced by ecosystems around the world. To learn more about the different ecosystems, you can check out this playlist with stories about the world's major rivers or this video which has been suggested by the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you want to see more like this and see you in the next one. Cheers.